My name is Dustin Mills, and today we're going to go over an overview of ISO SAE 21434, Road Vehicle Cybersecurity Engineering. The overview video here has, has two goals. First, I want to talk about the video series. So this is the first of a 11 videos, or 12 including this one. So I'll talk about the goal of that series and then kind of the goal of this video itself. So the video series is going to help those new to ISO 21434 gain a better understanding of the standard. A main goal here is to help non-security teams understand the security requirements and to help gain alignment between teams, processes, and departments. This is probably the most important part of this. You know, secure engineering doesn't happen in a vacuum. There are many standards that came before ISO 21434 to which it is either dependent or mirrored from. There's, you know, a lot of different processes in engineering and a lot of different standards that we need to try to align to. So, you know, one main one that we'll talk about is going to be ISO 26262 or functional safety. This actual, the video itself, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the structure and layout of ISO 21434 to help people read through it and kind of understand it. I will talk a little bit about the relation to other standards. Throughout everything, I want to present the idea that ISO 21434 is a, a bare minimum framework. Uh, it might seem like a lot, but it, it has not been around very long. Uh, it is going to adapt as the market adapts and, and, and matures. Uh, so it is still very early and compared to functional safety, relatively easy and bare. Many other automotive companies and suppliers are already looking at how to start consolidating processes to make them simpler. So the overview videos, like I said, there is a 11 videos, not including this one, one for each clause, clauses five through 15. Those are the ones that have the actual cybersecurity requirements. Each video will provide an overview of the clause, the teams to implement the work products and general requirements. As mentioned before, it is meant to be shared with teams and departments to help gain alignment. And each video will lead into the deep dive or self-study of the work products and clauses if you are not on the vehicle security engineering cloud and do not have access to the deep dive. So what is the deep dive? It is located in the vehicle security engineering cloud or VSEC. That's vsec.blockharbor.io. And in the deep dive, we will review each work product giving a provision by provision breakdown. And that's going to include examples, tips, and other considerations. You do need to have a copy of the full ISO SAE 21434 standard. It is proprietary, so we're not, it's one of the reasons why the deep dive section is not you know, public or shareable. But yeah, un another thing that you might wanna have is going to be the Automotive Engineering Handbook. A really good book, it's by Dr. Ahmad Nasser. So look that up. It will help uh, as we go into each of the sections and understand how to implement a CSMS or cybersecurity management system. All right, let's talk about the organization of ISO 21434. First, I want to talk about the prescribed cybersecurity activities. These are things that you must do to become certified or to show that you have a robust cybersecurity management system. These cybersecurity requirements are called provisions. There is a 118, at least at the time of making this video. There are three different types. The majority of them are requirements. These are the things that shall be done. The other one is recommendations. These should also be done. And if you're not doing them, then you should have a good reason for not doing them. And then the other ones are permissions, which are things that may be done. There's only four of those, though. Proof that you were doing all of these provisions are typically shown through work products. There's 42 different work products. Work products could be documents, they could be process diagrams, they could be tools that you use to track various activities, they could be reports. 
Um, but again, they serve as proof of performing the cybersecurity activities. Uh, each work product is made from, at a minimum, the listed provisions. So provisions, again, map to specific work products. Block Harbor has work product templates for nearly every work product, but in many cases, whichever tools or systems you're already using to manage and track these activities will suffice as work products. You just have to ensure that whatever is defined as a work product contains the minimum activities prescribed. One thing to note, uh, 15 of the provisions do not map to a specific work product. An example here is requirement 13-2, which says the cybersecurity incident response plan shall be implemented. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, there is a cybersecurity incident response plan, and this is just saying you need to do it. Now that you know what provisions and work products are, let's see where to find them. So. Clauses one, two, three, and four are basic information. One is the scope of the document. Two is normative references, the requirements outside of those mentioned. It only lists one other standard there right now. Uh, clause three is terms and condition, and clause four is general considerations. Clause five through 15 is where you will find all the provisions and work product requirements. Uh, and then there's annexes at the end. The annexes have important summaries, examples, sample templates, guidelines, etc. Oftentimes, if you have questions or are confused, you can really just look through the annexes or do you know keyword searching throughout the document and get a pretty good idea of what to do. Let's talk about terms really quick. Reading the terms, you'll see that they often reference other terms in the definition. So if these are new to you, please spend some time reviewing these. And example is threat scenario, okay? A threat scenario is the potential cause of compromise of cybersecurity properties of one or more assets in order to realize a damage scenario. So, you know, within there, there are three different definitions that you need to know. I will say some of the key terms. So item, which is term three, dot one dot 25 it's referenced eight times in other terms so you should really learn what the word item is and that is going to be different than a component uh, which is also referenced um, a number of times uh, items and components are different an item can be a component or a number of components but an item has uh, functionality at the vehicle level and a, uh, a component is something that is just logically separable other terms is cybersecurity and risk, each of those referenced four times, and then damage scenario, attack path, and threat scenario, each referenced three times. Again, just you know, focusing on those might help you with understanding all the other things that come up. You will see this diagram in the beginning of the standard itself, as well as referenced in our videos and really anywhere referencing the standard. It's just a visual guide to see how the clauses and subclauses are organized. There is a box around each clause. The clause title lets you know what activities will be discussed, and then boxes within the box are for each of the subclause. Okay, an example here is subclause 5.4.1, cybersecurity governance. Uh, listed here is one of the requirements, uh, requirement 5-1. The organization shall define a cybersecurity policy that includes, and it tells you what that policy must include. It also has some notes that will uh, clarify and give additional information. So while the Road Vehicle Cybersecurity Engineering Standard, ISO 21434, is organized into clauses, and each clause speaks to a particular group of activities within the engineering process uh, and, and product development lifecycle, it should be noted that the activities in each clause are not necessarily in order of how they're going to be done. They are just grouped by similar activities and work products. So clause five is going to go through the you know, organizational cybersecurity management. You can see by the subclauses, the types of things it's gonna be talking about. This is the organizational level activities. Clause 
six is project dependent. This kind of goes into project planning and everything else. This will start with a cybersecurity plan and end with a release for post-development report. A clause seven talks about distributed cybersecurity activities. This is how you will uh, interact with your suppliers, whether those are internal or external. Clause eight is continual cybersecurity activities. These are things that the organization must continually do. Moving forward, we have you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, this is broken up into the concept phase, product development phase, post development phase. Together with clause six, this makes up kind of the full project life cycle. Here, nine is the concept phase. 10 is product development, 11 is cybersecurity validation, 12 is actual production, 13 is operations and maintenance, and then 14 is the end of cybersecurity support and decommissioning. 15 goes into specific details on the TARA or the threat analysis and risk assessment. That is a work product that is actually created during the concept phase in phase nine. This chart of foundational standards, if you look up AVCDL overview video and just watch like the first four minutes of that, Charles Wilson goes over this in detail and you can see actually through the AVCDL, which is a completely free open source framework for achieving CSMS and integrating it with all the other applicable standards here. But the main thing that I want to talk about here is, is quality management systems. You have to have a international standard level QMS in order to be certified for ISO 21434. Cybersecurity is really just another quality requirement. So without some kind of quality management system, it is you know nearly impossible to have some level of consistency and cybersecurity. The life cycle or the systems and software development life cycle, things here are, are not specifically mentioned as required in the standard, but they are implied through wording and other requirements. And then at the top, we have ISO 21434 and the newer one 24089, which goes over the software updates. While QMS is foundational requirement to 21434, functional safety or ISO 26262 is more of a parallel standard to facilitate cybersecurity integration into automotive engineering processes and to help it uh, complement and strengthen safety. The two standards have many similarities. Organizations should align processes and checkpoints as much as possible to avoid rework. They're you know, may also be instances of contradictory needs or requirements between safety and security. So if processes and collaboration between the groups is strong, this can be discovered and worked through early. This slide here shows the V model systems development life cycle and, you know, how general design and production activities kind of line up to safety and as well as cybersecurity throughout the systems development process. Looking at work products and processes, we can see additional uh, similarities here between the two standards. So there's a cybersecurity plan. There's also a safety plan, right? So the ones in bold on this slide are actual uh, work products mentioned in the standard. So the cybersecurity interface agreement, uh, in safety, there's the design interface agreement. There's, you know, safety item definition. There's a cybersecurity item definition. There's the 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 hazard analysis and risk assessment or the HARA, and then there's the threat analysis and risk assessment or the TARA. So there's a number of different areas here. As mentioned, not all of these are work products. The the ones with the bold line around it, uh, at least on the cybersecurity side are work products that you will find in 21434. Uh, these, these other ones, however, are more an alignment of activities that you need to be aware of when looking at these two systems. That is it for the overview video. I hope that at least when you pick up the standard and start reading through it and looking at it, you have a better understanding of how to read it and you can start looking at the other teams and systems mentions. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much.